on today's walk I'm walking through a woodland here that is believe it or not actually 8,000 years old what's even more unbelievable is that we are about nine miles from Trafalgar Square so imagine any period in history any people you think of from those periods would have walked through these woods Victorians, Georgians, Romans, Saxons, Normans, Celts, Tudors, medieval people they all would have come through these woods and walked probably this path I'm walking now but uh, what I've really come to do this video for is the hill always caught my eye you know this hill is called Shooter's Hill and the more I found out about it the more I realized there is something about this hill and these woods are called Oxley Woods they lead up to what appears to be once a very sacred place now a 1930s housing estate but in its day and when I say in its day I literally mean a very long time ago it would have been seen as somewhere probably a lot more special so let's go up to the sacred and mysterious Shooter's Hill I also wanted to speak about the name Shooter's Hill. Apparently uh, it was an archery place in medieval times. People used to practice their archery here. And uh, also another reason it might have been called Shooter's Hill is because the, the highwaymen used to come here. If you think of Dick Turpin, he was probably the most famous one. And they actually used to wait on the hill uh, for obviously a coach to come over the hill either making its way into London or making its way in the other direction towards Kent and they would hold up the coaches and steal the jewellery and then the highwayman would get hung from a field nearby which I've just actually found out is the golf course and this is where the gibbet field was Samuel Pepys actually wrote the man that hangs upon Shooter's Hill, and a filthy sight it was to see how his flesh is shrunk to his bones. So it sounds like it was quite a horrific scene to see if you came up here, and it would have been seen as a warning to anyone who dared rob people up on this old hill above London. I'm now at the bottom of Eagles Field Park which is pretty much on the top of Shooter's Hill and Wessex Archaeology actually came here and they did a dig uh, as far as I know and they found out they found iron ore in the ground and they established that there was a Celtic Iron Age um, settlement here and also a foundry making possibly axes um, and stuff like that and they also found pottery here but they also believed this is the exciting part they also believed 
that there was this place was an actual place of ritual and that is extremely exciting and why not this we're on top of this hill here and this is what the the people from this age liked they liked being on hills they were closer to what they would have perceived as the gods they would have been very interested they would have been excited they would have wanted to be in these places they would have wanted to bury their dead in these places they would have wanted to have taken part in ritual higher on these hills I'm up on top of Shooters Hill now, up on the top of May Place Lane, where the only remaining burial mound uh, sits in the middle of a 1930s housing estate. The company who actually built here destroyed another five mounds and built on top of them. They didn't even bring archaeologists in to look at them. They literally wiped them out. This mound here apparently hasn't been opened and it's the, it's the biggest mound that was here. Um, so for all we know if there is a foundry down there with a ritual site if that's true and then you've got six burials up here high up on this hill over London and surely there must have been probably very important uh, tribal leaders or chieftains who, who were buried here and possibly if this is the biggest mound God knows who's buried here or uh, it could be a family you know, they, their bodies probably would have disappeared. They might have been cremated. They might have been buried, but there would be nothing left of them after all these years because of acid in the soil. But I just find it exciting that this stuff is here amongst this 1930s development. Um, and the fact that it hasn't been opened, God knows what's in there. Uh, personally, I don't like the idea of sometimes going in. I know, I know archaeologists like to dig but sometimes I prefer not to know rather than to know I mean that's my own personal opinion and um, but now I'm going to show you the street where the actual uh, other burials were supposedly and I'm going to try and look on the description of the map to see if I can find the exact or roughly thereabouts spots now apparently some houses are actually built actually on top of the burial mounds. I mean, can you imagine that? I think that's... I would love it if my house was built on top of a burial mound, even though that sounds weird. This is actually Ashridge Crescent, and this is where Somebody who used to live actually in Oxley Wood called Colonel Bagnold, who did a lot of research on the burial mounds, and he found out this is the street where the other five burial mounds are. And apparently this is, well, this is the west side here, and there are, were a couple of burial mounds here, but people believe that the, some of these houses are built on these burial mounds. And also, as we come up the street, there's actually, as we come up to the north side of the street, there were some more burial mounds here. I mean, it's amazing because there's people who live here now who maybe don't have any idea that these people from thousands of years ago had possibly buried under their houses, which I find really amazing. What is interesting is this is a conservation area, so it's very well kept, as you can see. We are in classic 1930s suburbia here um, and it's fascinating. One of the things that was recorded by the, uh, the building company apparently is there is a burial between a cedar tree. Now there, this is the cedar tree as far as I know from the on the internet between a cedar tree and a Spanish chestnut. Now, the Spanish chestnut is here at the end of the road, in the middle of the road. As you can see, it's a preserved tree 
from the grounds of Shrewsbury House. So possibly you could argue the burial mound was between here and here. So it could be under this house here for all we know. But isn't it amazing how all this stuff is hidden under 1930 suburbia? Before I go, I wanted to show you this park in um, Shooters Hill called Shrewsbury Park. And this park, to me, is really special. It feels really ancient and old. If you look over there, you can see just see the vista of uh, East London, the Thames, the Thames Valley dropping down. There's lots of old oaks here. And um, um, if you imagine, if you remove the 1930s houses away, you know, the Celtic foundry and the possible ritual site is at the top of this hill. The burial mounds were over there. So this should have just been a continuation of uh, this area. And it feels very old and it feels very special. Whenever I come to this park, I feel, I feel like, like I'm going, going back, back in time. In time. <laughs>